Hello there YouTube and with the most of the civilized world, this is Gregson coming to you with another video and we are back in the 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 in the developer commentary of Fury of the Sun, a CTM made by me, of course, otherwise it would not be a DEFCOM. Um so we are lighting this up a bit more still I suppose. Hello there. Ah yeah, that's right. I left this one. I fixed that issue. Okay, so in here there is a lot of chests and a lot of things to grab. But one of the best things probably is a rapier. A rapier is a stone sword which basically allows you to move faster. Oh, I know, I, I couldn't do anything else, but like a regular sword would just be to normal sword. Boom! You're now faster. But um, creepers and skeletons blow you off even faster, which is in theme with the area, of course. And there's a, there's quite a lot of rapiers, so don't worry about running out of them too soon yet. Um, so yeah, rapier, very nice, but um, creepers and skeletons are basically your worst enemy in here. And that one fell off. What an idiot. Like that one. Okay, so we are going to go that direction see what this road leads to of course I know already but still um, this is all very treacherous because it is just basically an invitation for skeletons to shoot you off or creepers to blow you apart um, but that that's what it was intended by but I was a nice map maker and I didn't put the spawners up there to do that see aren't I nice Then again, I didn't make any honey pots um, to um, lessen the natural spawns. So basically, they could all still be here. And I ran out of torches. What an idiot. What an idiot. Granted, of course, for now it looks reasonably safe, but let's see, there was somebody there. Um, it won't stay safe <laughs> forever, I suppose, because of spawns. Like every moment a set cattle can spawn there. Like I've been saying for the past few minutes. Okay, so um, I'm going back here and getting the stuff. Also, I I think I didn't really <laughs> address too much lore um, about this place. Last time I was like, yeah, this is a land of stubborn people. They love tradition. Uh, that's not really a lot of lore, now is it? Um, basically, um, these people all have very religious beliefs. Um, in the beginning, uh, the um, let, let me just do this first because I cannot multitask. I just can't. I have an inability. Okay, there we go. More cookies. Um, there we go. Uh huh. More torches, thank you very much, and more cookies. I should sort all of this properly, but I might do that in the future. I also might just not, I might just use it and be on with it. Um, okay, so now we're going to go back up, and on our way over, we'll talk a bit more. Hopefully, I'll someday finish what I want to say. Okay, so the people here are very stubborn. They do not want um, any other people um, interfering with their business and they do not like to change their circumstances too much. Um, this is why, um, well, circumstances, um, they don't want to do like giant buildings to just to do stuff. That's why they just have like that one fortress that everybody works and lives in, more or less, except for the scouting um, areas and the railroads which they actually absolutely needed to survive um, yeah but except for that they don't really like to change that much um, but when certain disasters happened which we'll, we'll come back into um, once we find some more law they basically um, accepted making things just colder so that their 
the things that threatened them. See? See? Get the fuck out of here. <gasps> he almost got me. Bastard. Bastard. Okay, so, um, so that they, um, they just turned down the temperature, and with that they excluded their threats. Now, you guys all stay outside. Thank you. And we're here. And that's not good. It's not good at all. I forgot there were spawners here. Thank you for your death. Yeah, yep, yeah, you can die too. Thank you very much. Okay. There is some more pickaxes in here and in here. Um, in these crates there is nothing. They are just environment pieces. But what we do want is this. These carrots are temporarily a food source boost, I should say. Now, of course, I can make them grow here, but as a, as a map maker, I know that there is more stuff to be had elsewhere in the map. And get on out. Of course, the sword gives us a speed boost, so it basically means we travel faster with it as well. We're just going to go and never come back here again. Bye bye, guys. Bye bye. Also, if you look down there, you'll see stuff. Uh, I don't have the time to particularly <laughs> say too much about it. We'll, we'll be there later on, and then I'll look back up, I suppose. Okay, now it should be safe. So, down there, you can see other stuff, um, which leads down from the fortress over there. So, you know that there's going to be stuff there if you visit here. Um, which is basic level design, I suppose. Um, but I wanted to have like a very, very broad area where you could see stuff. Um, as a result, a lot of map makers have said that my first area is much too large. There's much, like, there, it's far too open. Um, but that's just their opinion, I suppose, which in every right, they should have their own opinion. Like everybody should. But, um, I think it's, it's quite okay. It could be filled up more, yes, but that's not what I was going for specifically, and thus I didn't. Um, so yeah, I suppose this is a safe area by now. Um, these are armor stands uh, meant to confuse the player um, while they come come in, as well as like just serve for armor, I do suppose. Um, the gel stuff doesn't break. Uh, so yeah, this is Chalatis Woods. Soft and comfy armor has unique Chalatis Slayer that absorbs pretty much all impacts. And there is also the Aura Edge um, stuff. Um, you can use this as a weapon, but it doesn't stack. So like, I don't have plus 6 damage in here together with this. Um, that would be completely overpowered. Um, I did this uh, with a plus 3 because um, they don't stack specifically. I tested this out, told this to Mojang, but they didn't change it yet. I hope they do in 1.9. But basically, I wanted to make um, armor that gave you a damage boost, but it was supposed to be a damage boost of 0.5%. Uh, uh, not 0.5%, but just, you know, plus 0.5 attack damage. Um, so if you were a full set, you have plus 2, but it would be just gold armor. It would be very undurable. It would be like a, a glass cannon, basically. But um turned out that doesn't work. Um, you can use it as a weapon separately, and it doesn't take durability damage from that. Or if you just wear it and don't have any armor, you can just punch with your bare fists and get both benefits, which is obviously the use it is most suited to. But uh, yeah, it's it's all the armor we have right now, and we will have to make do with it. Um, I'm tempted to clear the fortress out a bit more but I really should go and get some better food technically but screw it I'm going to go here is 
stop at you. Thank you very much. Now go away, because there are spawners over that side. I know that because it's not maker. Yay. And we break the spawner here. And we break a spawner here. There we go. Okay, um, over here as well. I swear to God, this didn't go this well the first time I played this. <laughs> oh my. It was much worse. And we're actually getting close to the first wool. First wool is all the way up there. Um, the inside of this tower is, is very nice. Um, it's, it's not very nice, it's going to be living hell. But as a, it's a CDM, what did you expect? Of course, people who are experienced will play better than me. Now, this is a spawner for um, the skeleton version. Um, they do drop bows every now and then, but it's not really that special, I suppose. Come on, die! Okay, thank you for your death. I'm going to close this off for now, because I do not need what is in there to get after me yet. Torch. There we go. Now we could be massive digs and just go up the mountain, but we're not gonna because we're not massive digs uh, to the map maker because he did so much effort making this map, it's not even normal. Okay, and break. Break, come on quickly. So yeah, first area, relatively simple, should be. Um, there are difficult, there are more difficult maps out there. So if you want to play those, play those. Don't play mine. But seriously, play mine. Uh, kill the spawner, kill the spawner. Yeah, it's just because I know that these spawners are here that I can take swift action. Um, if I didn't, I would just go in and then there would be a lot of stuff spawning on the outside. But this is why you do the tactic stuff and you do not just go wild me out there. Hello there, skeletons. I'm going to leave now. <laughs> I actually am going to leave for now. And um, I'm going to have to get a new food source. For that, we'll go to the farm area, which we talked about in the very first episode. Um, shouldn't be too hard, really. It shouldn't. So let's go. I hope you guys are enjoying the series so far. Um, I certainly enjoy playing the map. Uh, this is my first completely full playthrough. Um, so I am quite curious to see what will happen. Am I going to be a massive scrub or do I know my own map good enough to actually accomplish stuff? Uh, but there's more torches on the starting area over there. Um, so yeah, um, I quite like the aesthetic. Um, if you are playing alongside with me, um, I am very happy. Um, you can make your own videos of this as well, of course. I I love, just just love seeing it. Like, um, very first person who played this map, which is actually that dynamite guy, which I talked about in the first episode, whose name I couldn't, I probably didn't speak right, even though it's pretty easy to identify what kind of name it is. Um, so yeah, this is the ender chest, the only one in the map or something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's it's a safe place for all your blocks you'd ever want. Um, yeah, so that dynamite guy, um, he was the very first person to actually play my map on a stream. Nearly right away after it was released. Well, boom then. And he was a uh, speed. Uh, well, not a speed I'm confusing people. Der. Um, 
he basically has done nothing else but develop his food source for like um, the past I do not even know how long okay there we go in those kind of moments I, I have to go silent so I can actually do the things so you can go to the fortress over here but you can also just go ahead I heard a skeleton behind me as well I think but I might be wrong okay get some food in us that's your big limiter your food right now um, you want to get to the farm area as fast as possible it's fine it's fine we still have this last time I kept I got here there was like five skeletons underneath this arc bridge thingy that was fun let me tell you it it really was fun for the skeletons not for me mind you <laughs> like that god I wish I had a bow come here you dancing it pathfinding Gotta light stuff up, bunch you overboard. Hopefully, I was going to say bye, but apparently, not completely bye. Um, spawner up here. I left it fairly visible. If I wanted to be an evil map maker, I would have made it more difficult to see. But it's not because I'm nice. Okay, so these are flares that the scouts of this area use. Basically, they mean this emergency, some kind of emergency. It's it's really simple. Red flare. There's undead over here. Yellow flare. Shipment arrived, which is basically like okay, a minecart just passed through, and everything is back okay. It's green. So if you're doing multiplayer, you can use it to communicate in large distances. But why would you? Because you probably have Skype or something. Probably. Nothing is certain. Um, yep. Doop -de -doop -de -doo. Big sink torches. Like you see, you need a lot of torches. It's a big map. Um, this is the very just the very first area. Um, also, you might be wondering, like, why is there lava in combination with like a snow area? The idea is that the better fictions, like I told before, um, just put all their um, difficulties aside by just making the area colder in some kind of way which will be more relevant later on <gasps> I nearly punched it I nearly punched it now that would have been stupid by me <laughs> oh my that was, that was just reflection <sighs> okay <laughs> back on track literally because you know see it's it's <laughs> I'm funny. Um, no, I'm not. But, um, yeah. The area, what was I even saying? I don't quite know anymore. Do they have any torches in here? No, I don't. Doesn't seem like it. Nope. Nope, I did not. So let's go back and get some more torches. Like, I have four left, that's not enough. And also, let's eat some cookies while we are at it. It's the worst food source, but that's, of course, why it exists. Um, so yeah, the petrifictions just put everything colder and colder, and eventually they got this giant ice valley with their railroads, which they needed to like get to and back from the farms. But um, eventually got so cold that they couldn't even alter the temperature anymore, which is why the tower you saw over there is actually frozen in and um, they couldn't turn off the I, I suppose refrigeration system um, 
that they used. They didn't use a refrigeration system or something, but it'll be clear, okay? It'll be clear later on. Um, so yeah, they put it all on cold. So why is there this lava? The idea is, like I said, that the planet has altered its orbit and um, you awaken from the ice because this area is becoming volcanically active, which is why at the very bottom there is this lava. Um, and thus you need to look out a bit here. Okay, and we are set to... Mm, let's, let's grab some more. There, there's tons of loot in here, so chances are you're not gonna run out if you're somewhat of an experienced player. I made this a very, very forgiving start, so shouldn't be too hard. Though I have seen people fail at it miserably, but I shouldn't say too much because I got killed within the first 10 seconds. Well, not seconds, 10 minutes. Yeah, let's just move on. Of course, you. You could try to light up everything here, but that would be stupid because you, you kind of want the monsters to spawn out there where they'll never reach you and not be on the pathways, which should be very simple and self-explanatory, but yeah. Um, so the lava is technically also a path you could take. Um, like level design works in several different ways. The players will, will go like if you lead them properly and these rail lines are very very obvious like you can never be too obvious when doing level design because humans are stupid and I'm a human therefore I am stupid as well we actually paused another mark so we're going to end this off soon uh, but yeah about my talk of level design, let's just finish that because otherwise I'll just forget. Um, for level design, you cannot be too obvious. Um, like, light is a very easy way to guide people, but this is a lot of lava, and people will immediately know lava, dangerous. And when they see the blazes, they're even more like, oh my god, I'm not going to follow the lava for some obvious reason. Um, and they're going to follow the pathways. And in doing that, I lead the player through this massive, massive valley um, of death and frost and lava and fire and frost still. Um, but yeah, it's, um, that's about it for this episode, I suppose. I'll see you in the next episode where we're going to continue there and go to the farms that are located in that corner and actually get a good food source for once.